Nvidia's new 4000 Super lineup has launched. But how super is this? Let's find out. Starting with the 4070 Super, which has been priced almost as the same as the previous non-super variant, but it's roughly 20% increase in core counts. Yani Kuda cores, Tensor cores, RT, yes, sare cores 20% zyada hai. Aur L2 case, jo already 4000 series mein badi hai, usme aur 30% increase hai. And all of this translates to 10 to 15% increase in raw gaming performance, making the 4070 Super performance equal to 3090. Yani ki, two saal pehle ka best 4K gaming GPU, or now you are getting that performance for just about 65,000 rupees. Two years ago, this performance was $1.5 lakh rupees. It was more than that, depending on scalpers. Now when I say performance, it's not about just gaming performance. In video and photo editing apps, we are getting close to 10% increases. The only area that the 4070 Super is behind the 3090 is in 3D editing apps because of the limitation of VRAM. But speaking about VRAM, the only GPU that has gotten super VRAM upgrade is the 4070 Ti Super. Although on paper, it hasn't received as much of an increase as the 4070 Super. Now the 4070 Ti Super, its core count is exactly 10% more than the non-super variant. And L2 cache is about the same. VRAM and the speed of VRAM has been increased by 33%. Now this again means a 10 to 15% increase when you compare it to a regular 4070 Ti and it kind of closes the gap between the 4070 Ti Super and the regular 4080. And this is true across gaming, content creation, and even 3D modeling software. Matlab with 16 GB VRAM, the 4070 Ti is now an amazing option for 3D modeling and even few cases AI developers. Because in both use cases, mein, having slow performance can mean slower training or rendering. But if VRAM is low, your project will not go. Yes, last 3D projects cannot be opened with lower VRAM, GPUs, and similarly, AI developers won't be able to feed their entire data set to the GPU if they don't have sufficient VRAM. So, if you are looking for a card that has 16 GB of VRAM, that's now possible with the 4070 Ti Super. And speaking of AI, let's talk about the 4080 Super. And here, it really shines. Now, every tech YouTuber on the internet is bashing 4080 for not giving a major uplift in performance. Admittedly, it's as low as 3%, but that doesn't mean it's a bad card. Because number one, it's about 30,000 cheaper now. And number two, people are not buying high-end GPUs for gaming anymore. The 4080 Super is 12% better in all AI benchmarks, even though the specs are just 7% better compared to the regular 4080. We are not even sure on how that's possible. But if you look at the benchmarks of all the new Super GPUs, the biggest performance uplift is in the AI training and inference benchmarks. Now it's no secret that 2024 is the year for AI. So it's clear why Nvidia is focusing so much on improving AI performance of these GPUs. But not everybody is buying a GPU for AI. So which is the best option for you? Huh. Well, to put it simply, if you're just gaming or using the Adobe Suite for content creation, the 4070 Super is a really solid choice. Because this already lets you play every single game at around 4K, and Adobe Suite mostly relies on the CPU. And the 4070 Super is giving you all the acceleration your software needs. So you don't need anything more than that. Anything. And for 3D modeling, we feel the 4070 Ti Super is the best choice. Like we said, the extra VRAM will come really handy for handling large and environmentally complex projects while costing 20,000 less than the 4080 Super. And finally, people working with AI and people who want the best of the best can look at the flagship, which is the 4080 Super. So that was our take on the Super Series. In case you need a PC or PCs with new GPUs, we are the MVP, the place where it all happens. Until next time, 